Okay, kids, so it has been a technological struggle, so we are on to day two in the second video. I apologize for taking so long to get this thing out, but it's just been horrific. Everything I've tried has just not worked. So this is, a, this is the more the math side of the YouTube video, so make sure you watch the YouTube video first that, that was filmed in my room. So basically, again, what happens is that you have a cathode and you have the anode, and the cathode is always going to be where the electrons are being emitted. So you're going to shine light on here. That's going to give it a certain amount of energy. If you cross the threshold of energy, then the electrons are going to be emitted. And they're going to travel over here to the anode. So the electrons are always going to go from the cathode to the anode. That doesn't mean the cathode is always positive or negative. You can change that up based upon the voltage. So... On page 913 in your book, you have a list of the work functions of different metals. So, for example, aluminum is 4.28 electron volts. Gold is 5.10 electric volts. So, what that means is that it takes more energy to kick out an electron from gold than it does from aluminum. Okay, don't forget the EV, just a measure of energy. So, kind of the mother of all equations is this K max equals E minus phi, or phi, which is your work function. So this is the energy of the photon, okay? This is the energy of the electron that holds it. You've got to keep those two things straight. And to calculate that energy of that photon, there's a couple ways you can do it. The easiest is to take uh, Planck's constant, multiply that by the frequency, subtract out that work function. So again, you have to at least exceed the energy of that work function because this is like we talked about yesterday. This is, this is the, the bond money for cool tape. This is how much money ELISA brings in. So K max is going to be whatever is left over. So the other way that you can count, the, the other big equation is what we call V stop, and this is voltage. So your voltage is going to be how much voltage you have to create across this cathode and anode gap to stop the current. So what happens here is that this is your, same as your K-max, but you're going to divide it by the charge on an electron. So this is going to tell you, okay, hey, because your voltage, remember, has to be in joules per coulomb. So if you're going to find voltage stop, that has to be joules per coulomb, which is going to be important in terms of making the units work out. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of graphs. This is not, this is not intensity. This is current. Okay, this is amps. And this is the frequency of the light. So what happens is this is zero current. So what you're measuring is the current that is going to be measured across this gap. So... What's important is that there's no current, and then all of a sudden, bam, you hit a high enough frequency, and this is increasing frequency, you hit a high enough frequency that all of a sudden you get this spike, and now you get a current. Now, this is negating anything to do with voltage. This is just, hey, it's a simple setup. But here's what's important, is that if this was... A, a, the the, the non-quantum idea of how this should work, this line should actually be horizontal across this whole thing. So in a classical idea, any frequency should make the photoelectric effect happen. But what happens is that when you actually get this, what this means is that these electrons exist in a quantum state. So you either give these enough you either give these electrons enough energy to create a current or you don't. Now, once you exceed that threshold, then as you go more and more and more, if you increase that frequency, that current's going to remain the same. Now, the other thing that you can get is, let me kind of erase a little bit right here so that we can see this. I kind of jumbled everything together, my apologies. So this is current and this is voltage stop. So what's happening here is that there is a threshold. So what's going to happen is that this is going to tell you, so again, you have no current. This is zero and this is 
this is your voltage. So this is positive voltage and this is negative voltage. So what that means is that at that some point, this is going to make this stop. Now, these are two different lines. One is, and this is, this is intensity. So if you have a weak light, okay, there's not many photons, you're not going to get very much current. If you have a more intense light, you're going to get more of a current. But here's what's important is that they both go off of zero at the same point. So this is telling you how much voltage it's going to take to stop that light. So let me work through a simple example. Let's say that you have a metal with a work function of two electron volts. So it's, in other words, it's going to cost you $2 to get out of jail. You're going to shine light with a wavelength of 550 nanometers. Now, I went old school and I worked in joules. Like we talked about on that previous lesson, if you want to keep these in nanometers and find the, your energy in electron volts for that light, you can't. I just went old school and changed everything into joules. So to get the, my electron volts changed into joules, one electron volt, remember, is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules, which is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19th. So that's my work function in joules. Now, based upon this information, I want to calculate K max, the maximum velocity, and the stopping potential. So what I did is I came down here and I said, okay, well, my K max, I can also write instead of HF, Remember, that's the same as HC over lambda. So I put in these numbers, and I got 3.62 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So that's how much energy Liza is bringing in. It's going to take us 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19th joules to get Tate out of jail. So what that means is that what I have left over is 0.42 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So now, to calculate that velocity... Well, kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So if, so if I solve for velocity, I get 2k over m. Okay, not a big deal. So I got two times the kinetic energy. This is what's left over after I freed Tate. I'm going to divide that by the mass of an electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms, and I get a velocity of 3.04 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. So now clearly... I'm not going to change the work function value. But if I put a higher and higher energy into the light, if I make that wavelength shorter and shorter and shorter, I'm going to get more and more kinetic energy left over. This velocity is going to get, become a bigger and bigger number. Now, to calculate my stopping potential, there's different ways you can do this. One is you can take K max and divide it by the charge on an electron. Now, the reason, remember, voltage is joules per coulomb. So you have to make the units work out. So what does I do? I took that K max. So this is how much energy I have left over. I'm going to divide that by the charge on an electron. So I get joules per coulomb, otherwise known as volts. So I get 0.26 volts. So what that tells me is that it's going to take 0.26 volts, okay, on a potential across that plate to stop those electrons. Got that, that's how much energy that they have. So my voltage across here would be 0.26. Now, remember, if I'm going to stop these because they're electrons, I want my cathode, where they're ejected, to have a positive charge. And I want my anode to have a negative charge. So when those electrons are kicked out, I have two things working for them. They're going to want to come back to the positive plate because they're attracted to that and they're repulsed by the negative plate. So what that's going to create, this positive 0.26 volts, is going to create that stopping potential. Now, let me give you some hints on some of the questions. When you get to question number 12, it's going to ask you what's going to have a, a larger current. You're going, to, you're going to hit a solar panel with red light and blue light. Now, here's what's important to question number 12, is that they're both going to generate 2 watts, which is the same amount of energy per unit of time. So this is going to stay the same. Now, what you want to look at, remember, is that red light has a longer wavelength. Blue light has a shorter wavelength. So what that means is that to get the same amount of energy, that's going to take more photons of red light 
than it is of blue light. Now, this is assuming, this is a key assumption, that they're both capable of, of creating the photoelectric effect. Okay, that's going to be the other key to this. That they're both going to have the same photo, that they're capable of producing the photoelectric effect. So, because of what's going to create more current, is because of the fact that, again, this is important, you're going to have the same power per unit of time, okay? Same power, energy per unit of time, which is going to be 2 watts. So, the only way that can happen, then, is that energy, okay, is going to be the same, but it's going to take more photons of red light, which is going to kick out more electrons, so your red light is actually going to have a larger current. Now, when you get to question number five, and I realize this is somewhat out of sequence, but still with me. I was kind of going through this trying to help you out. So, on question number five, when you get to that one, uh, it's going to ask you, uh, it's, you're going to have this diagram that I have right here, okay? And like this first question is, why do the curves become horizontal for delta V greater than or equal to one volt? So, basically what's happening is that up to this point, Okay, and you have to realize you've got a negative voltage and then a positive voltage. So, and this is current. So you have current on your y-axis and then you have voltage along your x-axis. So if you have a voltage less or greater than negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, whatever, that's going to completely shut down this current. After you get past a positive 1 volt, then it doesn't make any difference either. So what's happening in terms of this is that this voltage here is that this tells you, okay, once I cross this threshold, then I can see some current happening. So this tells me my stopping potential. So after I get past this point, I'm allowing more and more and more electrons to make it across this gap. So now, once I, ex once I get past one volt, the reason that this flat lines is because then it doesn't make any difference. At that point, all the electrons are making it across. You're just speeding them up, okay? So up to this point, this is where you're stopping all of them. This is where they're all going across, and this is this medium in between. So keep that in mind when you go to answer question number five. When you get to question number 13, okay, the whole key to question number 13 is that you're going to have the same intensity. So because you want the same intensity, remember intensity is watts per square meter. Watts is the same as joules per second. So when you get to question number 13, you're going to be told that you're going to reduce the wavelength by a half, which means you're going to increase the frequency and then think about what happens to your energy. Again, on number 13, you want to keep the same intensity, okay? Keep that in mind when you answer number 13. Now, let me give you some hints on some of your questions or some of your answers. And these are to the problems, okay? So this is just some hints on some of the answers. So on your problem number six, that answer is going to have two metals. Okay, that'll make sense when you get to it. Question number eight, your answer should be around 200 nanometers. Your answer to number 10 should be around 500 nanometers. And your answer to number 12 is a common metal that you use to make cans. Okay, so that should give you some hints on that one. Okay, again, I apologize for this taking so long to get out to you, but everything that I've touched technologically has been a train wreck. So I will get this uploaded to YouTube. So there will be one I filmed last night in my room. And then there's going to be this one. Uh, because I'm getting this out to you late, let's make this assignment due on Tuesday. That way we can also talk about this on uh, Monday during the, uh, during the uh, Google Meet time. So this will be due on Tuesday.